Good morning from Kujuac, Quebec. My name is Alex, and this is going to be a very northern Canadian flight. I'm in the far north of Quebec after flying here on Air Inuit 737-200, and there's a lot more to their operation than just those classic jets. In addition to their 737s, they also fly Dash 8s, which I flew on last year, plus a few King Airs, and some of the most rugged airplanes Canadians have ever built, Twin Otters. Air Inuit's Twin Otters are a rare sight in the south, and tend to fly exclusively up north, providing direct connections between communities. So, while I was there in April with my friend and fellow YouTube creator Mark Brandon, we knew we wanted to experience the Twin Otter for ourselves. We ended up finding a round-trip flight to Tasuyak, a small village just 110 kilometers northwest of Kujuak. Tasuyak is a village of only 400 people, and with our previous experiences of being stranded in northern villages still very fresh in our minds, we were pretty cautious with our flight choices. This morning flight would only go straight there and straight back though, so we figured we'd be okay. The DHC-6 Twin Otter taking us there is this 300 model, registered as Charlie Golf Kilo Charlie Juliet, and first flew in 1980. It started out in a much different climate, flying for Emirates Air Service in Abu Dhabi before returning to Canada in 1985 when it was taken up by Air Inuit. Since then, it was occasionally leased out to other operators, but has flown for Air Inuit for the better part of the last 37 years. After a quick engine run-up on the other side of the ramp, it taxied back over to the terminal for boarding. Now even though it's a very Canadian plane, originally designed and built by de Havilland Canada in downstream Ontario, I haven't personally flown on a Twin Otter before, so I was pretty excited to hop on. For most regional flights up north, there isn't actually any security, so it was just a matter of lining up with boarding passes, ID, and heading out to the Twin Otter. <laughs> Air Inuit has open seating on all of their northern flights, and so I headed up front to grab seat 2A, with an excellent view of the engine and the flight deck right in front. Without anyone sitting in front, the legroom is pretty roomy too. A quick personalized safety briefing later, the two Pratt & Whitney PT-6s were fired up, and we were off to Tasuyak. Here's the departure from Kujuak off of runway 25. didn't already know, the Twin Otter was designed as a stole or short takeoff and landing utility aircraft, hence the barely 10 second takeoff roll just then. For that reason, it's arguably one of the most versatile airplanes in the world, and can be fitted with anything from tundra tires to skis and even floats. If you hadn't already noticed, there's a very specific reason why I chose this seat. Air Inuit's Twin Otters have a bubble window in this row, meaning you can get views looking straight forward and even straight down too. With us flying only a thousand feet over the treetops, this may just be the coolest window seat ever. Meanwhile, inside, in the seat back pocket, Air Inuit still had the usual items, including a safety card for the Twin Otter, an early 2020s vintage pamphlet, this mask of some sort, and the air sickness bag. The flight to Tasiak is only 30 minutes or so, and I was well amused just watching the train go by. And yes, we really were only cruising at 1,100 feet. That might seem a bit low, but Northern Quebec as a whole is surprisingly flat, relatively speaking. Plus, the Twin Otter, as versatile as it is, doesn't cruise terribly fast, so it didn't seem like there was much point in going any higher. I will say though, it was super cool just being able to follow along with what was going on up front just by watching the GPS. 
it's not every day you get to actually watch what's going on. Later on, the visibility outside dropped a bit, and so it's kind of trippy to sit there, feeling like you're in clouds, and then a tree goes by not too far below. Here at Inuit's Twin Otters, seat 450... Hold on, wrong video. <clears throat> 19 passengers in a 2-1 layout. This flight was fairly empty, with only 5 or 6 passengers on board, and all of them opting for the side with two seats, except for me. However, these aren't your normal commuter airline seats. They actually fold up and to the side so that the plane can be converted from passenger to cargo use in seconds. Like most smaller airports in this part of Quebec, Tassiac Airport has a single gravel runway that's 3,500 feet long. Thanks to the fresh snow though, it's not super visible from where I was sitting, and all I could see was the perimeter fencing and some barely visible runway lights. Of course, that's just business as usual for Air Inuit's pilots, and here's the landing onto runway 05. Before leaving Kujuak, we had the chance to talk with our crew a bit, and explain the ridiculousness of what we were doing. So, once they shut down, we stepped outside into the snow and got some photos with the plane. We would have liked to have walked to the town, but the airport is about 3 kilometers away, so it really does feel like the middle of nowhere. Plenty of photos of the plane later, we shuffled into the terminal to take a look around there. The village of Tasiak first came about following the opening of a school in Kujuak in the 1950s, and lots of Inuit families congregated there as a result. However, wildlife resources around Kujuak were somewhat scarce, and many had to, quote, rely on government allowances. So, it was decided that a new village would be created here, on the shore of Leaf Lake, and Tasiak, which means resembling a lake, was officially established in the late 1960s. There wasn't a lot to see beyond the airport, thanks to the low visibility, but with the fresh snow and, given just where we were, it was almost eerily quiet here. Settled back on board, that quiet was soon to be replaced with another half an hour of PT6s once again. Less than 20 minutes after shutting down, here's our departure back to Kujuak off of runway 23. I chose the bubble window on the opposite side to take in the sights once again, and obviously watch up front. This flight back was pretty similar to the first one, and with only three new people boarding in Tasuyak, it was pretty empty. On a personal note, I've been working towards my instrument rating and commercial license over the past little while, and after this, I kinda wanna fly a Twin Otter. It really is the embodiment of Canadian engineering, built for flights exactly like this, and for those to some even more remote places. As we approach Kujuak, I do just want to say that this whole thing was so much fun. Air Inuit is phenomenal at what they do to connect the people of Nunavi, and I'll always remember that time I flew with them to the middle of nowhere just to try the Twin Otter. Here's the arrival into Kujuak, landing on runway 13.
thank you so much for watching this very random adventure with Air Inuit, and I'll see you next time.